This is commercial pilot Carlene Pettit. For the past four years, she has been in a fight for her professional life with Delta Airlines. Carlene Pettit is an airline pilot who has flown and or instructed on the Boeing 727, 737, 747, 57, and 67, as well as the Airbus A330. Pettit has four decades of flying experience. She has worked for seven airlines over her career and currently flies an Airbus A330 for Delta Airlines. She's the mother of three daughters and the grandmother of seven and holds MBA, MHS, and doctorate degrees in aviation. She's published six novels based on her life and travels, including children's books. She's also written a book dealing with the FAA's threat to aviation safety and is currently writing a training guide for pilots of the A330. So then why, with all of her overwhelming expertise in commercial aviation, has Delta Airlines been trying to kill her career instead of rewarding her for her efforts? One word, whistleblower. Back in 2016, she expressed her concerns to her Delta superiors about the dangerous conditions under which Delta management was forcing pilots to work. Instead of getting commended for her life-saving efforts, she was fired. Not only did her immediate bosses conspire to fire her, but also Delta's senior vice president of flight operations at the time. Oh, but you may know him by his new title, FAA chief, Steve Dixon. That's next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maximus here. I hope you're all doing well wherever you may be all around this great big world of ours. This story broke just after Christmas, but it didn't seem to get much attention. But you know me, when I see a story that needs to be told, I tell it. Whistleblowers play an important role in all facets of industry. However, none more important than in the aviation industry where millions of lives are at stake every day. Whistleblowers are a rare breed of the few strong enough to risk their personal futures for the greater good of total strangers. Even though these whistleblowers are very aware, it is an unpopular position to take. Even though there are supposed to be laws to protect them, whistleblowers often face retaliation ranging from harassment, discrimination, and demotions to outright job termination. According to a December 27 article from the Wall Street Journal, a pre-Christmas Labor Department ruling determined that the now FAA Chief Steve Dixon participated in efforts with Delta Airlines management to wrongly use psychiatric evaluation to retaliate against the pilot who raised pilot and passenger safety concerns. At the time of the incident in 2016, Steve Dixon was Delta's Senior Vice President of Flight Operations. On January 28, 2016, Delta pilot Dr. Carlene Pettit submitted a 43-page safety whistleblower report to senior management, including then-Delta Vice President of Flight Operations Steve Dixon, currently the Chief Administrator of the United States FAA, and Delta's Vice President of Flying Operations Jim Graham, currently the CEO of Delta's subsidiary Endeavor Air. Pettit's report raised concerns of pilot fatigue due to too many hours without required rest, time off, improper pilot training, improper pilot record keeping, and Delta's failure to properly maintain its FAA-mandated Safety Management System, or SMS, program. The lengthy decision by a department administrative law judge concluded that Mr. Dixon, as Delta's senior vice president of flight operations, knew about and approved punitive moves against veteran co-pilot Carlene Pettit, who was deemed unfit to fly. Pettit said that after she submitted a report to managers about safety issues, Delta grounded her and referred her for a psychiatric examination in December of 2016 where she was promptly diagnosed with bipolar disorder, a disease which she nor anyone in her family has ever had. 
However, as the Wall Street Journal reports, the psychiatrist who gave the initial diagnosis, which Delta paid for, years later was forced by Illinois state regulators to stop practicing medicine, partly due to improprieties involving other commercial pilot screenings for Delta. Under contract provisions between Delta and its pilots union, Ms. Pettit was then referred to doctors from the Mayo Clinic and elsewhere for subsequent evaluations. She and Delta shared the cost of those follow-up reviews, both of which discredited the original doctor's findings. But in reaching his diagnosis, the first psychiatrist didn't reference any letters of support for Ms. Pettit, and according to the ruling, he didn't interview anyone about Ms. Pettit, not even the doctor who over the years approved her to retain her commercial pilot's license. Now this next part sounds like something straight out of the Middle Ages. The initial diagnosis from Delta's personal quack psychologist also found Dr. Pettit's experiences years earlier, including attending night school while helping her husband's business, and also raising three children under the age of three, suggested. Now wait for it. Mania. Delta's doctor suggested the effects of being a mom caused this highly esteemed woman to suffer mania. During his 2019 confirmation hearings, Mr. Dixon told lawmakers individual pilot matters were handled by an experienced team, and I had very little involvement in individual cases. He also told the panel he had provided direction that the appropriate follow-up actions were completed and that the contractual processes were followed. However, the judge's ruling supported Mrs. Pettit's claims that she was singled out for special scrutiny to try to keep her quiet about safety issues. Scott Morris, the judge who presided over the long-running litigation, determined that Delta punished and discriminated against a federally protected whistleblower without any evidence indicating that her performance as a pilot was deficient in any way. In his decision, the judge noted that any allegation of a mental health deficiency for a professional pilot can be fatal to their career. He also said that to formally question a pilot's mental fitness stigmatizes that pilot in the eyes of the close-knit aviation community, regardless of the ultimate outcome. He said Pettit had been harmed by medical records that will forever be in her FAA medical file. According to the decision, not a single witness questioned her flying acumen. The ruling says that in this case, the squeaky wheel did not get the grease. Instead, it got unlawfully discriminated against in the form of a career-defining mental health evaluation. Ms. Pettit has four decades of flying experience and a doctorate in aviation safety. Many inside Delta saw her safety concerns and warnings as valid and told her to brief managers about them. But simultaneously, other company officials identified her as a candidate for psychiatric evaluation. Issued before Christmas the ruling contains strong criticism of Delta's safety culture and more broadly warns against management's use of compulsory psychological assessments for the purposes of obtaining blind compliance by its pilots. As a result of the findings, Miss Pettit was restored to flying status after nearly two years and she is currently a first officer on Delta's Airbus A330 jets. But the judge agreed that the episode extracted a severe emotional toll on the pilot. Ms. Pettit filed suit under an aviation whistleblower statute, alleging she sustained financial damages and a hit to her professional reputation. The judge awarded her $500,000 in compensatory damages, along with back pay and other financial benefits. The decision also requires Delta to send each of its pilots a copy of the final order to deter similar management transgressions according to the judge who called publicizing his order possibly embarrassing but not erroneous. The ruling described Ms. Pettit's safety concerns as prudent and reasonable, including allegations such as chronic pilot fatigue, inadequate pilot training, falsification of training records and lack of confidence by some pilots to manually fly certain highly automated jetliner models. The judge also said that he found that Delta Vice President Captain Graham viewed her tenacity in seeking clarification about her stated safety concerns as somehow problematic. 
The ruling calls Mr. Dixon's testimony in the case vague, evasive, and less than credible. The judge wrote that Mr. Dixon's internal company emails highlighted that Delta's much-touted open-door policy for safety complaints was not as open as portrayed by the company. The FAA spokesman declined to comment on that point. Delta said they will appeal the decision. Ms. Pettit's lawyer, Lee Seaham, said his client declined to comment due to fear of possible company reprisals. So while Delta's management denies the accusations, I have to say given Pettit's stellar record and career, I tend to side with her. What about you? Let me know down below. And on your way out, don't forget to check out the links to our merch shop and subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell. And as always, remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus. <laughs>